In this lecture, let's learn how we could fetch the ingredients required for the recipe which we have up over here. So the best part about the Spoonacular API is that they also provide you with all the ingredients which are required to prepare a particular recipe. So if you go ahead, right click over here and if you go to the console right here, if you take a look at the object which is the recipe detail object, along with the analyze instructions over here you also have a property called as extended ingredients so if you click on this particular option right here as you can see it will give you all the ingredients which are required to make this specific recipe now it not just provides you with the ingredient names but it also provides you with a whole bunch of other details like the amount of that particular ingredient required uh, the consistency of that ingredient the image for that ingredient as well so for example one of the ingredients is pumpkin so it will also give you access to the image of a pumpkin as well so that you could display that over here it will also give you the quantity of that pumpkin as well and it will also kind of give you the description of that particular item as well that means you need 600 grams of pumpkin which is cleaned so it provides you with the detailed information even for every single ingredient which you have and that follows for all the ingredients which you have in your recipe so now the question is how to display those ingredients up over here inside a recipe detail view so in order to display those ingredients, first of all, we need to have access to the object and the object here is nothing but the food object. So we have to say food object dot extended ingredients. So let's copy this property from here. And let's say we want to place this right before the instructions, which we have. So let's go ahead. Let's go to the food details view. And over here, I would go ahead and go right before the instructions here. And over here, I could create another heading called as in ingredients hopefully i have spelled it correctly and after this now i would say food dot extended ingredients and as this extended ingredients is actually an array of objects that means we have to map through that particular array so here i would say dot map and i need to get access to every single ingredient which we have up over there now, instead of calling these things as ingredients for the sake of simplicity, let's say that those are items. So here I would say item. And then after accessing each and every single item, let's say I want to display the details for that item. So in order to display those details, I'll create a div opening tag and a div closing tag. And in between these two div tags, let's create an H3 element here. And let's first display the name of that ingredient. So item dot name. All right, so if I save this and if I go back here, now you'll be able to see that we have all the ingredients required for this recipe. So we have pumpkin, olive oil, feta cheese, mozzarella, eggs, oregano, so on and so forth. So right now we are just displaying the names of those particular recipes, but let's say we also want to display the image as well. So here they have given a single name for the image, but in order to get an actual image, we need to access the exact URL where that image is located. So if you go to Spoonacular's official documentation, you will be able to find out a way to get the images for these particular ingredients. And instead of going through the documentation, I will provide you with that link directly. So in order to access that image, let's go ahead and create that image tag here. So I would say image source is going to be and here let's use or construct a string literal and this is the url which you need to go to so https colon double forward slash spoonacular.com forward slash cdn forward slash ingredients and then you also have the option to use any size of the image which you want so the size which i have chosen for this specific purpose is 100 by 100 and after this URL, at the end, you actually need to specify the item for which you want the image. So here we want the image for pumpkin. So I could say pumpkin.png here, but as this differs for every single item, I would instead use the image property here. So after this URL, I would say, all right, after this, append the item.image. And if I save this, if I go back here, as you can see, now all the images for the ingredients has now been fetched. All right. So after this, you'll also be able to see that for every recipe item or recipe ingredient, we have the amount, which means the amount of ingredient which is required along with the unit as well. So for the pumpkin, we have 
600 grams that means we need 600 grams of pumpkin so let's display that up over here as well so i'll use an h3 tag here and i would say item dot amount and after that let's use item dot unit so item dot unit if i save this now as you can see the quantities for those particular items are listed as well so as you can see now all the ingredients for that recipe are listed but they are not organized in a proper fashion so in order to organize these items in a proper fashion uh, let's go ahead and let's create a separate component for these items or ingredients so rather than having this entire code here let's create a separate component for that in the next lecture so in the next lecture let's create a component called as item list and let's place this ingredients code inside that item list so that our food details component looks much cleaner so let's learn how to do that in the next one